What's up guys? So you want to film your hunt, but you're not sure where to start or what you need. In this video, I'm going to go over everything I use and why I use it. Alright, now obviously the first thing we're going to need is a camera. And if you're just starting out and you're looking to get one camera, suggest a handy cam or something like that. This is my Sony FDR AX100 and this one package does everything I need. It's all in one, there's no interchangeable lenses, there's no fancy bells and whistles, this is it. You can literally set this thing to auto, it'll do all the thinking for you, put it on 4K, press record and you're gonna get great results out of it. I could do a three hour video on everything this camera is capable of, but I'm just gonna highlight a few of my favorite things. So right on top here we have our zoom toggle and it works very smooth. You push just a little bit, it zooms nice and slow. You push all the way down, it zooms pretty fast and you can go in the menu and change the zoom speed. Also on here, it has a toggle switch that controls the function of this ring and you can set it to focus or zoom and I generally leave it on focus but I generally have the camera on autofocus so it does the focusing for me. And now when you open it up you can control your iris, your gain, and your shutter speed and if you don't know what any of that means you can leave it on auto and the camera does a really good job of deciding all those settings for you but as you grow as a videographer and understand how all those things work and how they control your picture, you have the option to control all of that manually with this camera. You can control your white balance. It has a night shot mode, which it throws an IR light off the front here. And so it works kind of like night vision. Actually, it's exactly like night vision. It's not the best, but it is pretty cool for you know filming um, in the blind in the morning when you're getting ready for a duck hunt or filming up in the tree stand before it gets daylight or recovering a deer or whatever, it's a, it's a pretty cool mode. Especially if you have another IR light that you can use with it, it works really good. Another cool thing is it has a photo button. So not only will it do awesome videos, but when you're done taking your videos, it'll take pretty good pictures too, just regular still pictures. And this guy will film 4K, let me make sure I'm not lying to you. We can do 4K at 30 frames a second. We can do 1080 HD at 60 frames a second. So that'll give you some pretty good slow motion that'll like 50% slow down video. And the quality of that's really good. And so literally this is all you need to film your hunts. Set this thing to auto, go get in a tree or get in a duck blind, and it's gonna give you some awesome results. But there are a few accessories that you can get that will make a huge difference. First one being a microphone. This is the Rode Video Mic Go. I believe it's $60. And I'm going to link all of these products that I'm going over right down in the description so you don't have to go hunting for them. And they are affiliate links. If you click through the link and go to Amazon and buy it, I do earn a few pennies on the dollar from that and I greatly appreciate that. That helps me keep making videos just like this one. But anyways, this is my video mic go. And all cameras, most cameras, have a built-in internal microphone. And generally, they are pretty awful. So this $60 upgrade really, really increases the quality of your audio for your videos. Another thing that's a great idea is extra batteries. Now the Sony batteries that come with the camera are awesome, but I believe it only comes with one and you're gonna need at least two or three of them. And the native Sony batteries are pretty expensive, but you can get on Amazon and find these uh, Wasabi batteries, and they're a fraction of the price, and they don't hold a charge as good as the Sony batteries, but I'd rather have five of these than two of the Sony batteries, personally. Another upgrade that I would suggest is the VeraZoom. It puts all of your most important camera functions right at your fingertips. It's got this clamp on the back, it clamps right onto the handle of your tripod and then this cord goes and plugs into your camera. And what this allows me to do is I can control my zoom with this, I can control my focus, I can turn the camera on and off, and I can start and stop recording all from 
right here and this is all done with my thumb right from the tripod so and especially like if you're in a tree stand filming a deer hunt you don't have to be moving around a lot all you the only thing that's happening is you're doing all your controls with just your thumb and the same thing with a duck blind I can have the camera sticking out of the duck blind a little bit but I can be in the duck blind and I don't have to have my hands up on the camera I'm all contained inside the blind and it is just huge for cutting down on movement all right the next camera I want to talk to you about is my Sony a7R 3 and this is my main camera this year all the videos you've seen so far have been on this camera and all the other parts of this video except for when you can actually see this will be shot with this so the first part and then the next part will all be shot with the a7R 3 so let me know if you feel like you can tell a quality difference in the video so this is not nearly as user friendly as the AX100 is it uses an interchangeable lens system so instead of putting the ver zoom on here I actually have to reach up and spin the zoom manually which kind of sucks but I'm starting to get used to that the lens that I'm currently running on this is the 24 to 105 and that gives me a good focal range because 24 is wide enough to where you know we're in the blind I can film the guy next to me and it's not too tight on his face and then 105 is zoomed in pretty good so I can film ducks flying around in the air but also the cool thing about this camera is I can switch between full frame and super 35 so I push this button and it puts it in the crop sensor mode and what that does is it crops in one and a half times so it makes that 105 even tighter and then to make it even tighter it has a digital zoom so I can zoom in another two times with that so I can do 105 and then plus two and a half times magnification or something like that so it gives me it gives me plenty of range in there to get that 24 to 105 stretched out to where I need it. What really drew me to this is it shoots 120 frames a second at 1080p. So 120 frames a second is like four times slow motion to where the AX100 will do 60 frames a second and give you 50% slow motion. This will do 120 frames a second and give you four times slow motion. So it's just fantastic for slow motion. And that's one of the main reasons that drew me to this. Another downfall is it doesn't have a screen that flips out. So I have to put this monitor on top. So if I want to film myself, I can see what's going on in this monitor because this one won't actually flip around. So I'm right now with the AX100, I have the screen flipped around. So it's filming me, but I can also see myself right there on that screen. So that is huge also. And I know it sounds like there's a lot of downfalls to this, but the end result with the quality of video you get out of this is so worth it. So you'll notice I've also got a Rode mic on this camera setup, but this is the Rode Video Mic Pro. It does not get power from the camera. It requires a 9 volt battery, but it has some options on the back. I can do minus 10 decibels, 0, and then plus 20 decibels. And so what that's about is like I would use minus 10 decibels when I'm in a duck blind, when there's guys blowing calls all around me and you know lots of gunshots and I don't want my audio levels to be too high. I want to make sure everything sounds good and nothing gets all crackly. So I put that on minus 10. But then plus 20, say I'm in the turkey woods and there's a turkey at 500 yards gobbling his head off and I want to try and capture that. If I put that on plus 20, I might be able to get that when I generally wouldn't be able to with a regular microphone. Another great thing about this camera is it takes like a 43 megapixel picture, which is just nuts. It takes the most clear, crisp pictures you've ever seen. And so I'm always using it for product photography, you know, putting pictures on the website or getting really, really sharp pictures for Instagram and Facebook or anything like that. It just takes an incredible, incredible picture. So you'll notice on top here, I have the small HD focus monitor. And the reason I have it, well, the main reason I have it is because this screen does not flip around. So when I'm filming myself like this, I can't see what's going on if I'm in frame, if I'm in focus or what have you. So I flip this guy around and now I can see myself. I can see everything that's going on, make sure I'm in frame, make sure I'm in focus, the whole nine yards. And so that'll flip back and forth either way it's a touch screen it does all kinds of cool things and I'm no professional by any means my skill level only allows me to use this to about 3% of its full potential 
it does so many things that I have no idea about and just things that are way over my head. I know how to do slow motion, I can record a 4K video, and I can press the shutter button and take pictures and hope they're in focus. And because the camera is so smart, it generally comes out pretty good. But it does all kinds of things that I just have no idea about. But I'm learning and I spend a ton of time watching videos on how to use all this stuff. There's plethoras of tutorials on how to use things. And I'm the wrong guy for that. But the reason I'm making this video is because I've done just gobs and gobs of research. So if you're, if you're looking to just get into filming your hunts, I've got a pretty good path to set you on to get started. But then when you need to learn how to use it, I'm not the guy for that. You're gonna have to go find another video somewhere else. So anyways, that's enough about this camera. I'm gonna swap the cameras back and we're gonna move on with the video. Now we're back on the a7R 3 So let me know down in the comments if you can tell the difference in video quality. Also, audio quality. This is filmed on the Rode VideoMic Pro and the last segment was filmed on the video mic go so let me know if you can see uh, tell the difference between the video and the audio quality so the next thing we need to talk about is a tripod you've got your camera and you can film without a tripod but your results get so much better when it's steady so I'm filming right now on a Benro carbon fiber tripod I would suggest carbon fiber because of the weight and the strength you're not gonna bend the legs you may break one but it's not gonna bend this tripod weighs like three pounds and I think the comparable one in aluminum weighs about five pounds and those two pounds make a difference when you're running through the mountains chasing turkeys so get the best tripod that your budget will allow I would suggest carbon fiber if you can swing it and then you need to get a video head to put on top of it there's lots of options I'm using a Manfrotto video head I'm not sure of the exact models on the tripod or the video head but I'll find those and link both of those down in the description as well. It's worth spending the money to get a quality fluid head. You don't want to spend all this money on a camera and this whole setup and then your footage is real jumpy because you bought a cheap fluid head. If you're going to skimp on anything, the fluid head is not the place to do the skimping. So now we've got our camera, our microphone, and a tripod and a video head. And that's all we need. Except for if you're filming from a tree and you're deer hunting or something. You're going to want a tree arm instead of a tripod, but you're still going to want a good quality video fluid head to put on the end of your tree arm. And I don't have any suggestions on a tree arm because I don't have any experience with them. So if you've got a tree arm that you really like, leave a comment down below and uh, let everybody know which one you like the best. Alright, so we've got our whole setup and we really don't need anything else. But just like anything else that has to do with hunting, there's, there's a very little list of needs and there's a huge list of wants. And this goes on the wants list. This is the Aperture ALMX Lite. It's rechargeable. I put this arm on it and this attaches to my camera. So early in the morning when we're setting up decoy spreads or in the blind turkey hunting in the morning, turn this on. It gets super bright. You can dim it down to whatever, whatever brightness you want. And it's super helpful for filming when it's dark. You know, setting up the decoys in the morning or getting set up inside the turkey blind in the morning or it makes those videos inside the cab of your truck when it's dark so much better it just is so much better than just a dome light you can turn this thing on and it just increases the quality of your videos a lot so this is not a need this is a want but it's cool all right this next thing may need to go on the need list and not the want list this is a lens pen and its only purpose in life is making sure your lenses are clean this side's got a nice brush on it and this side's got this little felt pad. You know, we're not filming in a studio. We're out there in the mud and the muck and the water and everything else. And when you get crap on your lens, you don't want that in your video. So you need to be able to, uh, you need to be able to clean that off whenever problems arise. So having one or five of these in your pocket all the time is not a bad idea at all. They're super cheap and I've changed my mind. This is going on the need list no longer on the want list have to have this another thing to go on this list is extra batteries now, I would suggest at least one or two extra batteries for everything that takes a battery but you can't have too many of them you don't want to put all this time and all this money and all this work into filming these hunts and then you get out there and it's about to happen and your batteries die that's the worst thing that could ever happen so make sure you have at least two or three batteries for everything that you have that requires a battery 
Now I know that somebody's crying because I haven't mentioned the GoPro yet. This is my Hero 4 Silver. It's got the LCD screen on the back and I haven't mentioned it yet because honestly I really don't use it. I've got a gun mount on it so you can put it on the barrel of your gun. There's head mounts, chest mounts, fishing pole mounts, underwater mounts, suction cup mounts, the whole, you know, you can get a whole plethora of mounts. And they're great for second angles, but if you're gonna get serious about this, you need to get a main camera that's not a GoPro as quickly as possible. This will get you by in a pinch, but I would upgrade as quickly as possible. I mean, the video quality is pretty good on these nowadays. The audio quality is pretty awful, and the battery life is even worse. Um, to even think about going out and hunting with these, you need a half dozen batteries at least. But they are tough as nails. They, you know, you put them in these housings, and they're virtually indestructible. You can throw them underwater. You know, attach them to your gun barrel. They'll take all kinds of recoil. But they are cool if you want to have a second angle. You can put it on your gun barrel, like I said. Put it on your head, chest mount, whatever. Just don't let this be your main camera. If you want to be serious about filming your hunts, you need to move up from this pretty quickly. So that's it for this video, guys. And like always, thanks for watching. I hope it helped you. Uh, please consider liking this video and subscribing if you aren't already. And if there's any camera gear that you use when you're filming your hunts that I've left out, leave it down in the comment section and let me know. And if you've got any ideas for future videos, let me know in the comment section as well. We'll see you in the next one.